I, we will be looking at a completely different picture. In what way? In, first, in, in having a reasonable resolution of all the turbulences. 2015, we will witness resolve resolutions to the turbulences in the region, which means I'm not talking about solutions, I'm talking resolutions, uh, which means that we will have to find a way of, out of the turbulence and transform it into a new, a new thing. And what crises are you thinking about when you I'm say that? I'm talking about the, all the, the, whatever it is, the internal wars, call it uh, civil war, call it terrorist war. Uh, all of that cannot be sustained beyond 2015 for three reasons. One is that the superpowers who are now having the role of saviors or witnesses cannot go on with that for a long time. Yes, it is true that they are benefiting, many of them, if not all of the world uh, countries that are involved in the problem are benefiting from the sale of arms, are benefiting from the, the funding for the, for, to finance the war, etc. But that, has to, that will have to come to an end. It is not infinite. It's not infinite. The resources in the region, and we have also to remember, we should not be carried away. The total, the total GDP of the region is equal to the GDP of a medium-sized country. I mean, we sometimes are carried, out, carried away mm -hmm. by visions of great wealth and great um, resources. This is not true. The entire region GDP is, is, is equivalent to a, a, not a superpower, not a super economy, a medium, a medium economy. Speaking of the region, uh, regional integration uh, between countries in the Middle East and North Africa is quite low, especially if you compare to, to Europe, for instance, or, or North America. Regional integration doesn't really exist to the, to the same extent in the Middle East. Yes, I, I, I have also hosted... Uh, 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 in, in cooperation with the World Trade Organization, where I served as uh, on a panel on the panel of experts on shaping the future trade agenda, and in collaboration with the League of Arab States, I organized a, a conference in Amman at our forum, which I chair, uh, on the impediments to inter-Arab trade. An impediment on inter-Arab trade are not are technical barriers, much more than customs barriers. And these technical barriers are related mainly to security controls, to uh, problems of, of confidence mm -hmm. building. So we, we submitted the report and we are now working on addressing this jointly as a committee with the League of Arab States. We're working on finding solutions. Having said that, I would say that the solutions will be addressed more and beyond me through the digital trade. Mm -hmm. E-commerce is the solution and it is the future mode of trade. So in e-commerce, there is no problem of, of cost uh, uh, controls, uh, cost uh, or, or barriers, nor customs, nor licensing. It's a free, it's a free world on the internet. But international organizations, the World Bank, for instance, has said that Arab leaders have been moving too slowly when it comes to making progress That's and true. when it comes to making reforms. That's true. Do, do you think that through information technology, uh, you'll be able to, to, to circumvent Absolutely. the, the, the Absolutely. politicians. This, this, is, this is a fact, a historical fact. It's a, it's a real, real everyday fact. We, we see it in, 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 in reality. It is, now, I, I, I cannot understand, and I always give the model of, of uh, Sweden versus a, a country in the Arab world with the same number of population, where we see the GDP in the Arab world of a, an equal country, with no natural resources, at $30 billion, whereas Sweden is $170, $170 mm -hmm. billion. Dollars. Why? Because they manufacture digital technology and sell it. In the Arab world, we only import it. Therefore, I see the future of the region in, develop, in the development of the digital citizen in the region. And this is a campaign I am spending time on day and night to promote the idea that we need to become digitally aware and digitally competent. Speaking of that, you've been creating uh, 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 an encyclopedia, an yes. online encyclopedia in Arabic called Tagipedia. Yes. What's your thinking behind it? Uh, you see, Wikipedia, even in the US, the students are told not to refer to it because it's a free medium, not because it's bad. 
Wikipedia is, is, uh, an, in, is the encyclopedia, digital encyclopedia of the world. And it was an excellent invention. But the problem is that being a free media, anybody can enter any data, which is either correct or wrong, but as long as it is, the source is verified. What we ha are producing is an Encyclopedia Britannica mm -hmm. or Encyclopedia America for Arabic content in digital form. That's a very ambitious project. It's a project which we have been working for in 10 years and which will be launched in January. And by the time we launch it, Arabic language on the Internet will be number four instead of number 28 today. That's an interesting That's the point. ambition. That's an interesting... And, uh, di and, and digital technology makes it possible. Thank you very much, uh, Talal Abu Ghazali. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. Thank, thank you for this honor of being with you. I watch your program and I enjoy learning from you. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear. Thank you very much, sir. And with that, we're going to wrap up this edition of the Business Interview. Thank you for watching France 24.